Welcome. In this video, we'll discuss how to navigate Marketing Cloud personalization and access its key features. Over the course of this video, we'll explore how to access personalization and the main navigation tools, a high-level look into reporting, how to access and read a unique user profile, how to view and compare products in your personalization catalog, and how to view, create, and use segments. Let's begin by accessing personalization and exploring the user interface. To access the personalization platform, first log into your Marketing Cloud instance. Find the personalization icon in the navigation bar and then click on Personalization. If you can't locate the personalization icon, reach out to your Marketing Cloud administrator for assistance in gaining access. You can navigate through the various sections of personalization using the main navigation menu on the left. To access a submenu, click on a top-level navigation item. When you select items from the submenus, the information displayed on the main page will update. Let's take a look into the different sections in the navigation menu now. First, channels and campaigns. In this section, you can build and review campaigns categorized by touch points, such as mobile and email, where you engage with your visitors and customers. The audiences section provides access to view and create user and account segments, while the catalog section lets you access your catalog content and its subsets, including brands, authors, item classes, or content classes. In the machine learning section, you can create recipes, decisions, and reports using Einstein. These tools will help you present each customer with personalized recommendations and the most relevant experiences. Underneath this, if you have admin access, you can integrate personalization with other systems using gears and feeds and access other admin settings. At the very top of the page, you'll see the breadcrumb navigation to the page you're currently on. This can be used to move back a level or two quickly without having to use the navigation menu. You can also see the dataset selector drop down at the top of the page, just to the right of the personalization logo. If you work with more than one dataset, use this selector to change the dataset you're viewing and analyze that customer data instead. While some customers have just one dataset, you might be a better fit for multiple datasets if you have more than one website and want to keep the brand data separate, or if you want to split your datasets between testing and production environments. And finally, if you ever need help while in the platform, click on the person icon in the top right corner to access personalization's help documentation and the eCampus online learning portal. Depending on your permissions, you may or may not see all of these elements. If you need access to an element you can't currently see, reach out to your administrator to update your access. Now, let's take a look at some of the reports available in personalization. The reports dashboard is the default homepage in personalization. This dashboard contains high-level insights into visitor interactions with your site during the chosen timeframe. This data provides valuable information to help you plan your personalized campaigns and can also be broken down into smaller groups for analysis in a segment. On this dashboard, we can see a snapshot of key stats like total revenue, total orders, how many published campaigns are on our site, how many goal completions have been made, our top campaigns, how many visitors have been on the site what items have been viewed, and so on. Using the charts, we can quickly compare performance over a number of days, as well as view the stats for individual days too. In the upper right corner of the screen, we can use the calendar to change our view to show us the performance metrics for the past day, week, month, quarter, or create a custom date range instead. Personalization comes with a number of detailed reports. For a full breakdown on all the available reports, please check out the help documentation. Let's look into some of these more detailed reports now, starting with the recent visitors reports. This report shows the visitors who recently came to your site updated in real time. When we see a green dot next to the visitor, we know they are currently on the site and being tracked as we speak. If we want to go a level deeper and explore the individual events of a visitor, we use the event stream report. This report is a real time feed of all the events that are happening on your site. It refreshes every 15 seconds and shows who is on your site right now. To see more information on the individual event, we use this event detail column. And if we click on the user ID, we'll be taken to their unique profile, where we can see more information about the visitor and their activities on your site. Also within the report section is the actions report. This report rolls the events we're tracking on the site into specific click actions and view actions. 
For example, how many people viewed our homepage? How many have viewed a category? How many clicked on an item detail? The final three reports we'll look at are the visits reports. The behavior report illustrates the number of new versus returning visitors based on visits, engagement, logged in status, and purchase behavior. The technology report reveals how visitors are accessing your site, detailing their browser, operating system, and whether they access your site via the web or a mobile app. And finally, the referring sources report shows where a visitor was coming from when they got to your site. For example, Google, Bing, or another source. This report helps you identify your best performing referring sources with metrics like number of visits by source, revenue by source, average visit duration, and more. With all of these reports, the key goal is to capture this data so we can better understand our visitors and use it when creating segments later on. Next, let's take a deeper look into the unified customer profile we saw earlier. This profile is the key to understanding the people who are coming to your website, whether they are anonymous or logged in. Every visitor has their own unique profile that tracks their behavior to the second. If a person engages with you through more than one channel, and creates multiple unique profiles, personalization will attempt to merge their information into a single unified customer profile, creating an enhanced view of that customer. There are a couple of ways to access a customer's profile. You can use the search field to look up a user's name or email address. Alternatively, you can use the user segments page and locate the user through their segment membership. Once the profile is open, we can see key information about the person, including their name, location, lifetime value, and orders made to date. Below this, we can see their timeline. This shows every time they visited your site. We can see from the size of the dot how long they spent on your site and, if it's a green dot, how much they spent during that visit. On the bottom half of the page, we can see more identity information on the person. These attributes and details can come from the customer as they engage with your site or be brought in from another of your systems. And on the right-hand side, we can see more information about the content or products they've been looking at on your site, when they viewed it, and how long they looked at it for. Towards the top right of the page, we can see the user's affinities, the things they're looking at. This graph can be updated to show affinities by views, by time spent, and by purchases. And finally, underneath the timeline, we have a number of tabs with information on segments they are a member of, affinity details over time, and more. This information is a key feature of personalization, creating a comprehensive view of a person and all their interactions with your site and integrated systems. All this information can then be used to create personalization targeting segments, helping you present your site in the way that will appeal most to each visitor. Now let's delve into the process of comparing products within your personalization catalog. But first, what is the catalog? The catalog is the area in personalization where we capture the details of the items and content you have on your site. Anything on your site that can be categorized and interacted with qualifies as a catalog item. For example, products you sell, blog posts you want visitors to read, and so on. Let's take a look at products. On this page, you can see the different products available on your site, feature information on the product, and key metrics like number of views and purchases. This view can be filtered by product category, product keyword, or to show how an individual segment is interacting with a product. In the right side column, we can see an image of the product we've selected, descriptive information, and charts showing activity and revenue. Another key feature of the catalog is the ability to look into the specific products. This page includes detailed information like item name, which has to be unique, ID, URL, the price, and SKUs. The product information can be captured either through the site map or, more commonly, passed through using an extract, transform, load process, also known as an ETL process, and updated on a regular basis. The feature that makes the catalog so powerful and allows us to generate effective Einstein recommendations is the related catalog objects. These are elements related to this product that can be shared with other products and help us determine which other products are most likely to appeal to the visitor. For example, it might be brand features, product features, or gender of the intended user. Another key feature is categories. This is where we capture the different categories products can belong to within the catalog. 
On this page, we can see how different categories of products are performing. This will also help us when we build our recommendations to suggest other relevant products from the category the customer has shown an interest in. Finally, let's explore how personalization ties all this information together to provide deeper insight into your customers and aids in audience building through the use of segments. Segments are groups of individuals or accounts that are updated in real time based on criteria you set. Segments can be used in several ways. For example, they can be used for analytics to see how many people have or have not taken a specific action. They can be used to personalize campaigns by only showing certain content to a particular type of user. And they can be used to identify previously good customers who have lapsed for retargeting campaigns. Let's begin by opening the user segments page from the navigation menu. This will show all our existing segments organized in folders. We can open individual segments from here to review the users within it and see other useful information like their last activity date and lifetime value. And if we open the setup tab, we can see an example of how a segment can be built. Segment rules can be built around many elements including items an individual has interacted with, the campaigns they have viewed or not viewed, the actions they've taken, the location they're in, and more. To create a new user segment, we move back to the user segments page and click on the new segments button. We give the segment a clear name and then fill out our matching criteria. We can add individual rules or create rule groups and can use and and or logical operators if we have multiple rules. We also have the option to receive a daily email report that includes the current membership link and a list and count of the users added and removed. There are many different ways to use segments, from personalizing campaigns to setting goals and reporting. For today, let's look at how we can use a segment to analyze trends and compare data. Going back to our existing segment, we open the Segment Compare tab and then add a second segment we want to compare its performance to. Now we can see and compare the key metrics of the two segments, showing both the average and total view. And that brings us to the end of the video. In this video, we've covered how to access personalization and the main navigation tools, a high-level look into reporting, how to access and read a unique user profile, how to view and compare products in your personalization catalog, and how to view, create, and use segments. We wish you the best as you get started on your marketing cloud personalization journey. For more information, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.